Hello, everyone. Nice to see you on my channel, Touching Stories. Today you will hear an amazing story that is based on real events. It's a drama that will be a very important lesson for everyone. Joey sat in the personnel office of a private clinic and looked at the blonde female human resources officer with an undisguised plea. The same with a sort of just a predatory glint in her eyes, carefully studied the educational documents and marks, the passage of a girl practice in a public clinic. Red lips of the personnel officer folded into a tentative grimace, and the pink fingernail of her index finger, impatiently tapping, beat on the surface of her desk. Finally, she broke away from the papers and looked again at the girl sitting in front of her, frankly evaluating glance. It was at that moment that she realized that she was in for another setback. And yet, I am not prepared to offer you a position as a nurse in our clinic. Pretentiously polite tone said, angry woman, human resources. You understand that you are not yet competent enough to work in a high level institution such as ours. Try to start a job in your city hospital in the community, for example and gain experience and understand at the same time that the same time that the same time that the position of a nurse is not as easy as it may seem at first glance. But it's all written in a shaky voice, protested Joey. Look, there's a diploma of excellence. There is also a recommendation from the place of practice. Jane, I know you still have that position open. I saw it myself on the clinic's website. You've been looking for the right candidate for a month. But what's wrong with me? Her secretary, a frail, gray mouse with glasses, looked sympathetically at the full girl sitting opposite her boss. On the face of the unhappy girl clearly read the understanding. The real reason for the refusal, I understand. You think if I'm overweight, then I will not look so shiny among the other employees of the clinic. But at least I'll do a good job. I promise you that. You have no idea how hard I am willing to work in this place to justify your trust. Hearing her speak candidly about her appearance, Jane lowered her gaze and pressed her lips together. She really had no idea how an employee with so much bulk and size would be able to serve a parish of left-handed clinic clinic patients who were used to seeing only beauty in all their surroundings, especially for her own money. Joey, I'm glad you're objective in your assessment of your own figure. However, we are talking about something else entirely. Many of the patients who come to us are characterized by, shall we say, heightened demands on the staff and especially on everything concerning service as a nurse. It would be very difficult for you to keep up with their, how should I put it, domestic rhythm or what. Often we bring in businessmen or people from a very high social class and they, as we know, are always and everywhere thinking about work, even in a hospital bed, for God's sake. That's where you have to be hustling to keep the punch. But you know, honestly, I'm not sure you can do it. The woman folded the documents back into a folder and handed them to the girl. She hoped that she behaved as correctly as possible. Thank you for the allotted time, I all understood. Joey, barely able to hold back tears, Resentment and frustration got up from the table. You're going to make it. Don't despair, said Jane to her. It will just be somewhere else, somewhere more suited to you. Joey didn't answer. She only nodded. She walked toward the exit, intending to leave the clinic. Suddenly a tall young man in a snow, white robe, ran into her. The young man almost collided at the door. The young man almost collided at the door instinctively put his arm around Joe's shoulders to keep her from falling. That brief moment was enough for the doctor in charge to notice the tear-red eyes of the girl. And what is going on here? He asked unhappily, frowning at the head of the personnel department. Why are there people crying in your office all the time, Janie? Can you explain that to me? The blonde with bright pink fingernails blushed red like a cancer thrown into a bubble of boiling water. The new head doctor of the clinic, though he was relatively young, had already managed to grow a rumor about his stern temper. She didn't want to make him angry, so she just stretched her full scarlet lips in a menacing smile. It's all right, Simon. 
she said in a green voice. We've just finished another interview for a nursing position and demanding. Ask the chief physician what was rejected again. The man looked at Joey with compassion and understanding. She was frozen in front of him. They see your papers. He reached out his hand to the folder clutch under Joey's arm. The girl was greatly surprised by such straightforwardness, but gave him the papers. Simon looked through them, at first with a sniffle, then looked at the personnel officer with a furtive look. Jane, what is it? Why have you rejected such a valuable specialist? We haven't been able to find someone for that position for a month. The age of the candidates does not suit you or some other invented criteria. We need professionalism and ability to react quickly in difficult situations. Not looks and long legs. I heard this girl begging you to hire her. So give her a chance. Let her prove herself. After all, don't be in such a hurry to throw away such good talent. Especially since she's got all her papers in order. She even has a red diploma. I hear you, Simon. Forgive me, I just thought she might have a hard time with our work schedule. Well, let her decide for herself. The chief physician interrupted his subordinate. We urgently need a nurse in the surgical department. There are not enough people. I'm sure that this girl will be able to cope with the responsibilities entrusted to her. Joey was not expecting such nice words in her address. On her lips began to play a cute, childish, innocent smile, and in her heart for the first time in a long time awoke hope for the best. After the chief physician left, Jane silently took the girl's documents and told her to come back on Monday. Then everything will be ready. Come to work at eight, zero. Don't be late on any account. The discipline here is ironclad, she warned the girl. We take you on probation for three months. If during this time you do not receive any complaints and you do well with the duties, we will put you on the staff. Unbelieving her good fortune, Joey promised that if necessary, she would also come by seven, zero. Thanking the woman, the girl with an easy step ran down the stairs, the clinic and rejoicing in her long-awaited good fortune, cheerful step headed home. On her way, she went to a bakery and bought herself three cabbage rolls and a Napoleon cake. Finally, her first job. It was something to celebrate. She walked down the road, remembering her past. She'd grown up in a very ordinary family. Her father, Dan, worked as a bus driver and a loader, and her mother, Berta, was an accountant at a small firm that repaired and sold prefabricated windows. They always lived modestly within their means. They weren't poor, but they didn't have a lot of money either. Both spouses were happy with their positions, and so they worked in their jobs. For many years at first, when Jo was very young, she did not stand out among her peers. An ordinary healthy girl, with beautiful dark blonde hair, blue eyes, and a kind, always slightly embarrassed smile. Parents are very fond of their daughter, so tried to give her everything she needed to feel comfortable in a difficult environment of classmates. At the same time, Joey always studied with straight A's, and even received several diplomas for her school success. The girl was always kind and had a big and pure heart, so the lack of girlfriend she never had. Yes, and many of her classmates, she often helped write essays and solve equations for them in a difficult test. She was always glad that she could help her friends. And they, of course, could not help but be glad that they had such a wonderful, kind, and clever friend. The first alarm bells in the girl's health sounded when she was 12 years old due to hormonal restructuring of the body. Joey first gained a few extra pounds in a very short time. Over the course of one summer, the girl normal average build rapidly turned into a pretty but a little underdressed girl. The father and mother, when they saw how their daughter had changed since her return from her grandmother's house, were very surprised at first. They could not understand how, after spending three months in the country house, in the fresh air, and eating mostly vegetables and berries, 
Joey managed to put on weight so strongly and quickly. The girl herself, at first, almost did not feel the changes happening to her. The doctor, who followed up with her immediately after her return home, did not find anything unnatural in this process. This sometimes happens in the early stages of puberty. She threw up her hands. Try not to focus your daughter's attention on her changed body. All her vital signs are within normal limits. She will grow up in a couple of months and will be a slender beauty. The doctor reassured Joey's parents. So for the first time, Joey had to go to school in clothes that were a size and a half larger than she usually wore. The boys in class, of course, noticed the girl's fullness, but they dared not say anything to her aloud. After all, she had helped them out so many times in difficult situations during tests and quizzes. They felt uncomfortable making fun of her, especially since her weight was not yet that much. But months went by one after another, and the girl's condition only became more complicated. Joey seemed to get bigger every day just from just breathing. Very soon, the girl had to change her entire closet again. After all, now her weight at 163 centimeters was approaching a confident 70 kilograms. She began to seriously worry with each gained kilogram. Her friends turned away from her, arguing that they were ashamed to go out and be friends with such a full girlfriend. The boys also increasingly began to think up hurtful nicknames for a classmate, the kindest of which was Joy, Elephant. At night, the unhappy girl increasingly often sobbed bitterly, curled up on a soft pillow, and during the day tried to avoid eating in secrecy from her father and mother. In time, Joey practically stopped eating, drinking only water and some tea without sugar. Berta, noticing disturbing signs in her daughter's behavior, tried to have a serious talk with her. Joey, daughter, why aren't you eating at all? I've been trying so hard. I cooked for you and your father your favorite meatballs. I'm full, Mom. The girl answered stubbornly. I ate well at school, so I don't want to. Her mother put her hand on her daughter's back. Honey, if something is bothering you, you always know that you can calmly tell me everything. Who is who, but I will always understand you. You are my own and beloved daughter. The girl's tears of resentment began to glisten. Mom, how can I live now? I am so fat and fat, with me no one else in the class who wants to be friends. Everyone just calls me names. They're ashamed to sit at the same desk with me. Can you imagine? Tears streamed from the girl's eyes. Berta hugged her daughter warmly and held her to herself. God, my daughter, what nonsense is this? You're not fat. Yes, I have put on a little weight, but the doctor said it's normal. A lot of people at your age do. No, no, Mom. That's the thing. Not many people. I mean, look at me out of the whole class alone. I look like a whole tractor. She pulled away from her mother, wiping the treacherous moisture from her face. Kate Poli, they're like goddesses, so thin, so slim. They can afford all kinds of clothes. So what? But you, Joey are the smartest girl in your class, and if not in the whole school, that's much more valuable. Believe me, there's nothing of value here. She shook her head. They just cheat off me. That's all they need me for. And you show me some pride. She shook her head stubbornly. It's good for them to be kind when they need something from you. And if you take that away from them, then things will only get worse. Didn't agree with Joey. I don't know what to do. Mom, I know in my heart that I'm not doing the right thing. But what if food really makes me like this? What if I never lose weight again? The mother affectionately stroked her daughter's hand. Good girl, do not listen. You do not listen to anyone. You're my beautiful and it will all go away for sure. You need to think about how to finish school. Where you are going to enter further. Decide on your future, you know. If you start refusing to eat on a regular basis now, you're bound to ruin your health. And then there's definitely no way to guarantee that you're going to change. No, I'm not a doctor, but is thinness worth your happy future? What do you think? I don't have to answer that question. 
Decide for yourself first. Joey thought about it. The most memorable of the latter was the nickname Godzilla, which she was teased with for two weeks. At one point, Joey wanted to drop everything and leave without looking back. She couldn't even admit to her mother the endless bullying. So ashamed was she. But she remembered her mother's words. If you want something, you must go for it. Disregarding all difficulties and obstacles, only then you will succeed in achieving what you want. She was doing just fine with her studies. In fact, that was the only reason she tolerated everything that was happening to her. However, sometimes the girl did not hold out and hid in the farthest woman's bathroom school where she could swim. Where she could swim without fear of running into their dorm mates. Compared to all these attacks, her life at school could even be called peaceful. Of course, Joey was aware that her appearance was disproportionately far from modern standards of beauty. Still, the girl hoped that at least in high school, she would be able to find faithful and good friends. She truly dreamed that she would meet people here who would not care for her due to their mental awareness and emotional maturity. Her physical fullness was a miracle, but alas, it did not happen. So it was incredibly hard for her, who at heart was still a kind and compassionate person, to endure it all every day, with the arrival of excess weight into her life. Unchanging companions of the girl became only bitterness, tears, and disappointment. So in her twenties, Joey was an unwitting outcast among fierce students, tormented by her own imperfection and lack of prospects for realization in a world where good looks and shapely legs were valued more than the brightest mind and a great education. Joey shuddered to think that this was only the beginning of her further problems. The greatest difficulties began when she graduated from medical school. In her class, she was one of the top two graduates. The girl planned to start her career as a nurse in a private clinic. However, Joey's job search soon turned into a real obstacle course. She thought that with such professional characteristics, she would be welcome in any, even the most prestigious clinics. In fact, everything turned out to be far from easy. The whole time Joey was in training, she thought that the adult world would prove much friendlier, or at least peaceful, for someone with her peculiarities than it had been in school and college, in leadership positions. There must have been people who understood exactly how important professionalism and attentiveness of a nurse is in the medical field. In any case, that was the reasoning of the new graduate herself. However, in the first clinic where she came for an interview, she noticed a very strange thing. Among the staff, she has never met a woman over 40 or at least 35 years. The second thing that was for her, of course, several times more terrible, there was not a single girl in the facility who even remotely resembled her appearance. All of the female employees who had set up around her differed just this much, and for the most part looked as if they had gone to a beauty salon first thing in the morning where they put the perfect makeup and styling on their faces and hair. Joey immediately felt uncomfortable. Would she encounter the same wall of deafening incomprehension that had haunted her all these years? Why? Why is it always happening to me? The girl could not stop thinking as she left the scene of her first interview. That day, she was promised that they would call her back. As soon as they clarified all the data necessary for her case, but not in a few days, not in two weeks, no one called back. Then she realized she would have to deal with something like that more than once when she was looking for a job. Unfortunately, that's how it turned out. No matter where she tried to find a job after that, unhappy all day long, the girl received only rejection. Every time she came to the modern, spacious office of various commercial clinics, Joey saw the same picture. The managerial staff were mostly middle-aged men and above, but the nurses and specialists of all sorts were always very slim and very attractive young women. In the competition against her, they naturally did not stand a chance. And all this only because her weight exceeded the generally accepted standards of beauty. 
or at least the standard, so to speak, of cute looks. All of this was insanely frustrating. Joey could feel her anxiety only increasing with each passing day. The future looked increasingly uncertain. Back in her hometown for a while, the girl started living with her parents again. Of course, he was ashamed to tell her father and mother how horribly her classmates had treated her during her studies. So Berta and Dan never learned anything. Joey lied to them, telling them that her new friends that she was able to make in college were now as actively looking for their first job as she was. That's why they don't even have time to call each other or meet. Oddly enough, the girl's parents willingly believed this lie. They still couldn't understand why their daughter, being so old now, still remains a terribly lonely person. And she had neither the strength nor the desire to explain everything to them. In the end, Joey decided to take a serious look at her own health. She thought that if she could lose even a little weight, she would have a better chance of getting a desirable job. The girl began to try a variety of diets, to eat only fruits and vegetables. She even tried to give up eating altogether. It seems that in magazines it was called interval fasting, but the result was just pitiful. Not only did she constantly experience excruciating bouts of hunger, but she also began to suffer from dizziness and low blood pressure. She regularly drank the golden uniform standard of weight loss, three liters of water a day. The girl couldn't even squeeze into her most assorted shoes, let alone try on new shoes or boots. The saddest thing about the whole experience was that late at night, when her parents had already gone to bed, Joey would secretly enjoy the refrigerator. After that, she literally ate everything her mother had cooked the night before. Berta sensed something was going wrong with her daughter, but she couldn't bring herself to talk to her. It seemed to her that Joey was old enough to listen to her parents' advice, and therefore she was unlikely to want to have another conversation with her mother about her own excess weight. By this time, the woman had already begun to guess that her absolute refusal to eat during the day and her nocturnal raids on the refrigerator were obviously somehow connected. But Berta was also a simple person by nature and had never been interested in the problems of overweight people. About the same phenomenon such as increased anxiety and nervous pain chemistry, the woman never heard at all. So she did not try to forbid her daughter to do what she thought was right for herself. As for the girl's father, he always took his daughter for what she is and did not consider her fullness something strange or on the contrary, repulsive. For him, the appearance of Joey, her kind, hearted character, were extremely inseparable concepts. And he was very proud of the success of his daughter in school, and never doubted for a second that she would sooner or later still find the job of his dreams. Joey, meanwhile, switched to a tougher type of fasting. The girl began not only to completely refuse to eat, but... In addition, she added to her daily routine more fitness and strength training and a treadmill, which the girl was so actively engaged in the local gym. At first, they began to bear fruit with absolute starvation and even managed to lose them. First few kilos. However, the wrong diet and exercise regime very soon had a negative effect on the girl's well-being. And sometimes it seemed to her that she was about to faint while her heart was almost at the frantic pace of the exercise. Soon, no more water could help her flush out the toxins she'd accumulated during her fast. The joy of her first victories faded all too quickly, leaving behind only damaged health and a course of expensive vitamins and medications that the girl had to take for months. She tried to keep her bad condition a secret from her parents. However, everything was revealed when during another training session at the gym, she simply fainted. The coach called an ambulance and immediately called her parents. After that, Joey was severely reprimanded by her mom and dad and her personal physician. Of course, they look at us from their social media, where everyone is so slim and beautiful. At the drugstore, they take pictures in tights in front of the mirror. And then they want to build the same bodies in two months. But you do not understand, young people, that it's all a fraud. 
how many plastic surgeries there are out there. The old gastroenterologist was grieving, feeling Joey's pulse. Do you think that if you eat nothing, and in the gym, using crazy exercises and working out your last muscles, you will become like them? Naive. Joey only silently swallowed tears, resentment and shame, wanted to disappear under the strict, though loving gaze of his parents. That day, after fainting, she had to spend several hours under an IV in the emergency room. It turned out that the girl's body was exhausted to the limit. Despite the fact that outwardly Joey did not change much, it was hard for the girl to accept the fact that such metamorphoses to the human body. It was a question of losing weight did not happen as quickly as she would have liked, and that sometimes some people had to go for years to get the desired result. Anyway, from that moment on, Joey stopped torturing herself completely. She seriously feared for her own life and for the health of her parents. To think what would have happened to them if Joey had suddenly become an invalid because of her own stupidity. Such a girl could not imagine even in her darkest dreams. So gradually she began to return to the usual rhythm of life, which was also difficult for her. Hateful pounds, of course, went back, but the girl's remaining health gave her hope that things could still change for the better. After getting her first chance at the clinic, Joey began her duties as a nurse with double zeal. At first she really had a hard time. Among her new colleagues, brilliantly beautiful girls fighting the corridors of the clinic on a daily basis in their short galaxies. Few of them preferred to work in closed uniforms that suggested long pants and comfortable shoes. To be fair, I was the only one who dressed that way. The young nurses also whispered behind the newcomers back at first. It was a surprise to them that such a more positive girl was taken to the surgery department. But she was vouched for by the chief physician himself. And that spoke volumes. And Simon had never stood up for anyone just by acquaintance. And here a complete stranger, to him girl, and even a trainee. So, the rest of the staff reasoned. He did see something in her, though, that prompted him to talk Jane, always spiteful when it came to yesterday's student, without a single experience under her belt, into such a responsible position as a nurse. Soon enough, however, the gossip behind Joey's back stopped. In no time she was able to establish herself as an excellent specialist. All the knowledge obtained in the medical school for years of study, the girl was able to use in practice, performing each of her duties with excellence. The new nurse, despite her obesity, always reacted very quickly to signals and in a few minutes could cross the space of an entire institution to get to a particular patient's room. Clients of the clinic were also very pleased with the girl's work and spoke warmly of her. Joey was excellent at administering injections and eaves so that patients did not have a single mark or bruise on their skin and felt no more pain than an ant bite. She also excelled in dressings, wounds and sprains treated by the girl always healed on patients, thereby reducing the length of stay in the clinic very quickly. It was not for nothing that the young nurse had a special diploma from the school for special achievements in the study of surgery. Nurse Joey could blindly suture any level in complexity, check a dislocation if necessary, and qualitatively apply a complex bandage for severe injuries. Each time the girl felt a real thrill of finally being able to do the job she thought she was born to do. Short time later, Joey's portrait was on the hospital's honor board in the lobby. The smiling nurse became employee of the month. Slowly the other specialists got used to the kind. The other specialists got used to the kind-hearted nurse and began to treat her much better. Now the other girls. The nurses did not hesitate to be the first to talk to her. They often chatted between shifts, drank tea together when there was an opportunity or when there were very few patients in the hospital and generally took Joey as an equal. The preconception that an overweight person was bound to be withdrawn, jealous and irritable, shattered in their minds all by itself. Slim beauties gladly chatted with the gay and knew that if they suddenly have any problem or need an urgent substitute, kind and sympathetic colleague always come to help and help out without asking anything in return. 
Joey herself was only quietly happy about what was happening in her life changes. At that age, she was beginning to be treated as a real human being, with no strings attached and no self-interest. She could feel her soul thawing. After years of anger and rejection from other people, and this feeling unnoticed by herself made her life much brighter and more fun. Joey had the last month of her internship left to work. Janie told her that the head doctor and the patients were very happy with the way she worked. In addition, the girl was lucky to fit in perfectly with their team, and that means there were no more obstacles for the clinic's management to get the new nurse on staff. Congratulations, Joey. She shook the girl's hand sternly. You have to stay here just three weeks and you will officially become a full employee of our clinic. Plus, your salary will go up too. You don't have to worry. We never hurt our own people in that regard. Honestly, this is the first time. In my practice, that a person with a secondary vocational education was so interested in his job and so eager to help people. Joey was embarrassed a lot, but she thanked the head of her from the bottom of her heart. Thank you, Jane, the nurse said modestly. I took the Hippocratic Oath. How can I hurt people? And I like to help. I really hope that next year I will be able to go to higher education. I want to study neurosurgery if, of course, I can pass the qualifying round. The woman looked at the girl with approval. Good for you, not giving up. So you'll do well with your hard work and determination. You're going to be among the best, and we're going to hear from you again. But already, like the doctors of the extra class, Jane joked toward the end of the conversation. A couple of days later, at a staff meeting, it was announced that the surgical department where Joey worked would have a new chief. The next day, when Joey came to work early in the morning, she saw a line of unfamiliar nurses gathered at the door of the office of the new head. What's going on here? Asked Joey. Yes, the new superintendent is recruiting additional staff under him. With a disgruntled look, said Mary, the blonde girl from the trauma unit with whom Joey was often put on duty in the same shift. Something tells me that the head of the department is some kind of a shady guy. She took a close look at the girls. They were all long-legged with defined waists and hips, and with faces as beautiful as if they had just come off the pages of a glossy magazine. The nurse chose not to react to what was happening, though something in the depths of her soul gave a subtle little tingle reminding her of the certain fragility of her position among such a flower garden. However, the girl was convinced that she had managed to earn her place with excellent performance, so she tried to switch to her duties and put thoughts of her own imperfection out of her mind. A couple of days later, Joey was leaving the room where she had just finished bandaging the head of a businessman. He had fallen accidentally from his Aunt TV while on vacation, and now had to be seen at their clinic for some time with the suspected concussion. The girl had just managed to walk out into the hallway when she almost collided with a stocky, bald man wearing square glasses. Oh, excuse me, please, Joey gasped in surprise. I didn't expect anyone else to come through here besides our girls. The bald man's face went pale at the sight of the embarrassed nurse. A moment later, his mouth twisted into an unpleasant grimace. He quickly glanced from head to toe, before uttering in a haughty tone, What the hell is this? Who dares to work among orchids? I beg your pardon. I asked him again in a voice that sounded indignant and gasping. Did you just call me a tank? The man grinned crookedly. Who else? Do you see anyone else here who's as ugly as you are? How dare you, she said in a shrieking voice to Joey. Who are you, a man? In response, the man only brought his jacket to the girl's face, which was on his chest on a long silk cord. As she read the name, she felt her heart begin to beat harder. Before her stood the new head of surgery, Gorge. He disliked Joey from the first day they'd met in that hallway. At every opportunity he had, he began to mock the girl mercilessly, 
using his entire stock of repulsive epithet. And he did it at the most inopportune moment when Joey was working with patients. So one day, the surgeon came into the procedure room just at the time when Joey was treating burned hands of a client. The latter was an attractive woman in her late thirties and gorge, candidly looked her over and complimented her. Oh, what... Oh, what excellent patients are we treating here. You shouldn't say that, but, you know, I'm glad you're here. It's always nice to see such beauty in a room. And if she's recovering too, do you like everything here? The confused woman nodded. Yes, it's great. Your nurse service is also wonderful. She smiled good-naturedly, Joey. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I am very glad that you are treated here at the proper level. He leaned closer to Joey and not loudly, but so as to hear the patient hissed. Let's hurry up and get it covered, you fat bollard. She's been here for half an hour, probably suffering. And who whined to you? Only God. All the air in the procedure room is spoiled. With these words, he calmly walked out of the office, and Joey remained standing, barely restanding, barely restraining, coming to her throat sob. She was all red. Tides of indignation, and very afraid of inadvertently harming the patient. She heard every word the surgeon said, and tried to reassure the nurse, whose hands were already visibly shaking. Don't worry. I do not know what's wrong with him, but I know that people like him should be kicked out of medicine with dirty rags. And you're a sweetheart. Joey not even bothered about it. She thanked the woman for her concern and continued treating the burn. And there were more and more moments like that. It was as if the supervisor was deliberately provoking Joey, waiting for the unhappy girl's nerves to finally burst, and she herself wanted to quit the clinic. However, despite all his taunts, the nurse continued to do their job, receiving from patients nothing but gratitude and manifestations of genuine kindness. This infuriated the surgeon most of all. He could not in any way spoil the girl's own work and the attitude of others toward her. Finally, George found a reason to make Joey's life even more unbearable. One day, he summoned the girl to his office and, in front of her colleagues there, reprimanded her for allegedly mixing up the blood tubes of two different patients. When she took the tests, do you at least understand with your anger, with your head, what could have happened at all if, God forbid, I did not notice this monstrous mistake? The patient has acute nephritis, and she's going into surgery any day now, and the other one only has gastritis. So what? I'd cut up an innocent man who just needs a pill but I'd let the other one go home to die. But that's impossible, protested the frightened Joey. I personally filled out all the labels on the tubes, and I remember exactly. Everything was marked right. Oh my gosh, Joey. Held out, George. Would you at least be hame to lie in front of your senior's colleagues? Well, here's the deal. From now on, I'm reclassifying you as a nurse. For the time being, temporarily... You'll help out for a couple of weeks, clean up after the patients, and maybe you'll learn a thing or two. Besides, you'll know how to answer to your superiors. You'd better. They put her face on the honor board. She's better. They put her face on the honor board. All over the place now. She knows better than the professionals what to do. Disgraced and humiliated Joey left the surgeon's office. She could not even imagine that it was possible to mix up those ill-fated tubes she remembered how accurately and legibly recorded everything. What tests, what a... Preliminary diagnosis was in the electronic chart of each patient. What had happened to her was a 100 mistake, but most likely, as it was unpleasant to admit. The next day, drenched in salty tears, the girl began working as a nurse. Most of her day was spent scrubbing floors and medical courts, as well as washing linens, patients, and cleaning the back rooms and Gorge walked around frankly satisfied with his situation. He didn't need good specialists. 
the man preferred to keep at his workplace a small harem of the brightest beauties of medical school graduates, nurses, what's so hard about it? Bandaging a wound or giving a pill in time. Even a parrot can do it, but beauty and tenderness are paramount qualities for a good nurse. That was the way the lustful manager reasoned. That's why the surgeon on the day of his appointment arranged for the position of major assistant's real mini-casting. Joey also understood what was the reason for this attitude on the part of Gorge, and therefore was not the least bit surprised, seeing the next day at her former workplace a beautiful, long-necked beauty with a fishing rod lip. She was softly something in the ear manager, while the surgeon was smiling like a cat full in sour cream. At some point the girl became terribly offended and cried again, not understanding why, because of her obesity, some people consider her some subhuman. And Gorge's bullying continued. He could easily knock over a bucket of dirty water. When Joey forgot to pick it up in time from the corridor, or came up with another offensive nickname for the girl, which made the nurse and nurses want to leave everything and leave the clinic forever. Of course, Joey could have complained about the surgeon to the chief physician. Simon probably would not leave the problem unresolved. However, the girl knew that in this case, her life would simply become unbearable. Gorge would find another way to smear her to her colleagues and superiors. And then she would be reprimanded. Joey was not ready to leave her dream, so she had to endure and continue to silently scrub the floors. Simon, the 35-year-old head doctor of a private clinic, was sitting in his office, and he was anxiously going through a stack of complaints from visitors. As he flipped through the papers, he found the same words in big letters every time, highlighted in almost every other complaint. Negligence in handling injuries, stabbing shots like a pig with a thick needle, the nurse is stupid and cannot wash her hands before reaching into my wound, and so on. In one of the particularly negative reviews, Simon even found out that some of the employees of the clinic prefer to correct and apply complex makeup right in the workplace, not shy with the patients. There were especially many complaints about the surgery department, which had recently appointed a new head. Simon did not particularly like this Georgie, but he was presented as an excellent specialist. And then, all in the medical community know that the patient is not fed porridge. Let him criticize any medical institution, let alone such an expensive, prestigious as their clinic. At the same time, most of the complaints were still anonymous. People were afraid to incur the wrath of doctors and therefore were in no hurry to reveal their names, just in case they would ever come back here again. In general, Simon had no clear evidence of the guilt of the head or any of his staff, so he decided to go on the sly and set up his own hidden camera in the surgery department. He did it quietly, secretly from the main staff, so that then there was no unnecessary gossip and gossip, and no one would be able to warn the surgeon. We needed evidence based on which he would be able to decide what to do next with the head. The next evening, two homeless men piled into the clinic's emergency room, dirty clothes and piled with witch hazards. The long hair left no doubt that these two had come here straight from the street. In the arms of one of them lay an emotionless young girl. She was white as a sheet and had a large laceration upon her head, which bled incessantly, covering her face and her plain, light gray dress with red. Help, will somebody help? cried the men. A doctor, please. There is a girl in distress. At that moment, Joey heard screams in the hall and stealthily approached the beggars. The girl was hidden in the shade of a large plant behind the painted ceramic pot, and so she could remain invisible to everyone present despite her. Physical parameters. The nurse on duty at the reception desk immediately rushed after the supervisor. After a few infinitely long minutes, the supervisor walked lazily out into the lobby. Where the hell have you been? Yuliana thought to herself. The girl right here is about to bleed to death and all not save. More than anything, 
The nurse wanted to jump out of her hiding place and help the poor girl. But she couldn't risk it. Otherwise, it would be worse for everyone. The surgeon took only a few steps closer to the victim, who continued to be held in the arms of the homeless. By his unsteady, slightly shaky gait, Joey knew he was a little tipsy. Thank God, Mr. Doctor, one of them stammered before the doctor. They found her in the courtyard near the club. I don't know what she was doing there in the middle of the night, but I can see attacked her. Help me, for Christ's sake. It's too bad about the girl. She's still young. They almost broke her head, those bastards. We all saw them and the robbers as it happened, to Joey's horror. And Gorge only twisted his face in a drunken grin. These bums have got some nerve. Stella, no. Did you see that? They bring their girl to me, and they think I'll treat her for free. No, dear gentlemen, take your merchandise and go away. We do not have more wounded here in the middle of the night. Waving at the homeless and the injured girl, he, with the same remaining gait, went to his residency, while ignoring the cries for help, beggar. How could it be? God! How can you even call yourself a doctor after that? You'll burn in hell, sent two men curse the surgeon behind. When he and a young nurse from the reception disappeared from sight, Joey took a chance and quickly emerged from her makeshift hiding place, rolled out of the side corridor bed. She swiftly wheeled it toward the patient and her attendants. I'll take care of her. Come on, help me lift her onto the gurney. The bums looked at each other silently, but immediately complied with the nurse's request. As the girl was placed on the cold surface, she moaned long and hard. Careful, that's it. Joey whispered, smoothing the girl's hands. Now we will help you, honey. Do not worry. You just be quiet, and everything will be fine. Thank you, the beggar thanked her. We were just thinking... You are not human beings working here. How, after all this, can you trust the doctors? Joey nodded. And she rather took the wounded girl to the farthest room, where she and the nurse could not be found. There, Nurse Joey perfectly washed the wound, treated it with a special ointment, and put a neat little cap on it, so that the scar, which would inevitably remain in that spot, would be quite inconspicuous. After the bullet was administered to the girl, the Jane Doe gradually began to return to life. Her cheeks began to blush again, though faintly, and her eyelids stopped twitching nervously, which was already a good sign in her condition. She soon regained consciousness and spoke in a weak voice. The girl asked Joey to lend her her phone. Please call. I need to make a call. He is worried. Silence. Silence, sweetheart. Calm down. Stroked her hand. When you will be strong enough, you will call who and where you want. I promise. And while you're resting, you need to sleep. Don't you understand? The girl continued to insist in an exhausted voice. He's got some kind of plant in his heart, don't you? She asked the nurse to distract her. She only shook her head weakly. And do not shout at me, please. I can't stand loud noises. The millionaire looked at the girl as if he were ready to strangle her immediately in the workplace and then almost spontaneously uttered, Many backer. Is that clear to you, girl? Yes, that's clear. We didn't get one. The nurse turned her nose up and answered, What? The businessman gasped in anger. Yes, she texted me last night from your fake center. Do you think I was dreaming or something? The confused nurse was all she could do. What for flapping huge, as if smelling eyelashes. But then Joey suddenly came up to him and without saying a word, escorted him to his daughter's room, through the glass. Joey saw how happily he hugged his daughter. That night, Minnie was actually able to send her father a text message from Joey's phone. It turned out that the girl had been attacked as she was returning from her friends in the evening. And that was the only thing she could remember. She couldn't see her attacker's faces in the dark. 
A little later, Robert Bacher called all the clinic staff who were on duty that night into the lobby. Which one of you saved my daughter? To this man, I guarantee any promotion he wants. I have enough money and connections to arrange it. Joey, out of natural modesty, chose to remain silent. Gorge, on the other hand, decided to confess. It was me, said the surgeon theatrically, eyes downcast to the floor, made sure that she was given the best possible care. Joey almost choked on the manager's insolence. Oh, Gorge, you should know how grateful I am to you, the millionaire began in a soulful voice. You'll pardon me for being a little testy when I arrived, but you know what I mean, my only daughter. Sure, of course, he nodded. Family is sacred. What kind of patience could there be? Suddenly, the head doctor came out of the door. You don't have to thank him, Simon asked the millionaire. He is not the kind of man to spread his gratitude in front of him. With these words, Simon clicked on a remote control, and a large screen in the middle of the hall showed the true state of affairs that night. The businessman was able to see everything, how Gorge naturally waved off his daughter and how Joey came to her just in time. The only normal nurse in the whole building of which, of course, was Joey. It's all an impertinent lie, Gorge tried to justify himself. What are you charging me with here? I still have a lot of interesting material on this flash drive, smiled back at Simon. And how do you take bribes from the richest patients? And how do you spend time with young nurses while no one is watching? And how you get drunk in the middle of duty? Yes, I have a lot more on you. Gorge was silent, fired this heroic employee the very next day, which, however, no one in the clinic did not regret, because then sent home all of his mega beautiful harem, leaving only those girls who really loved and did their job well. Joey became friends with many backup. The businessman's daughter was genuinely appreciative of the caring nurse and became Joey's first friend in life. She was able to appreciate the inequality of the girl and she was not ashamed at all to appear in society as she did not have any prejudices about her friend's large weight. Joey herself soon began dating the head doctor. No one at first believed that there could be anything serious between them. However, Joey managed to win the heart of a young man. Simon had been a widower for a long time with his purity and cordiality. And that is why he took the relationship with the girl as a sign from above. Their feelings were full of tenderness and romance. So a year later, in spite of the ridicule of some people around them, she and Joey still got married. Many people at that time thought that their marriage would not last six months. However, they were all wrong. Joey finally consulted a good and experienced nutritionist. And with the help of many and her father's connections, she was able to work on her health at one of the best health resorts in the world. In addition, she was able to fundamentally change her eating habits and diet as a whole, as well as competently and gradually add sports and daily walks to her life. All of this helped the girl fairly quickly begin to lose the extra weight. And after a year and a half, Joey had already lost more than half of her former weight. There was no limit to the girl's happiness because now her life really played with completely different colors. But the girl did not stop and continued to systematically strengthen her health and save at the same time. What was the nurse's surprise when she found out a few months later that she was pregnant? This gift became one of the most important in her life. She had already forgotten that she could be a mother. Of course, her husband Simon was incredibly excited about the future addition to the family and therefore began to monitor the health of his wife even more closely and do everything possible to ensure that she was the happiest woman. Exactly nine months later, the couple had a wonderful baby boy who was named Ron. The son further strengthened the family, and his mother was anxious to have more nutrition and sports in his life, as she was afraid that her problems could be passed on to him. Fortunately, that didn't happen. Still, Joey tried to keep her child's health under control for as long as possible. 